All right, take a look at this problem that I'm working with. In here, I have three simple tables. The first one is the sales table. The second one is the products table. And then we have the price increase table. Now, the sales and the products table have pretty standard columns. I'm sure you can take a look and you can understand that yourself. But I'd like to draw your attention towards the price increase table. Take a look. So in the month of May, you can see that the price is set to increase by 2%. The price is going to stay increased by 2% for all the months thereafter and then it further increases by 5%. Now when I'm talking about the price, I'm talking about the price of all the products in the products table. So all of these prices in these particular months are then going to increase by whatever percentage that I have mentioned. Now if I have a data something like this, how do I work with this data and get to this particular output? In terms of the output, here is what I would need. So take a look that I have a very simple year, month kind of pivot table, and here I have total sales presented. Now let's just for the moment talk about one product to clearly understand what is the output that we need. So here I have selected a particular product, which is a smoothener product, and I can see that the total sales has been calculated, but in the month of May, I have already factored in the increased price of the product. This is the base price of the product. You can see that the price does not increase for all of this while, but then it goes up by 2% in the month of May, which is right here. And the new price is going to factor in the 2% increase, and that's the new price of the product. If you take a look at the further pricing of the product, you can see that the next price increase is going to be 5%, and the 5% is going to increase on top of the 2% increase already. So. Take a look in the month of November right here. Uh, previous price was $13.77. And on top of that, you further have a 5% increase and that becomes $14.46. And that's how your sales is also calculated right here. The question is, how are you going to factor in the price increase of the product and still be able to calculate total sales? Now, before we jump to the solution, I really, 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 really want you to try this problem on your own. You can obviously understand by the number of reallys that I have used, how much I really want you to try this problem before we jump to the solution. Maybe I'll play some music and then we will start. Here is what I'm going to do with my calendar table in order to stick to the star schema and still be able to solve this problem. Take a look. So along with the regular date column and calendar column months that we have, so date, index, month and year, I have created this new column called the accumulator column. What this accumulator column is essentially doing is that storing the value of the previous increase and increasing the price on top of that. Take a look. So the first time the price increased in the month of May, and you can see that as soon as we get to the month of May right here, the price increases by 2%. The next month the, is going to be the month of November and the price increased by 5%. And as soon as you kind of get to the month of November, you can see that it is a compounded increase. And that's why it's not really 1.7%, it's 1.071%, a little above seven because there's a 2% compounding on top of that. And this kind of column goes on and on and on Till the end of the calendar table and what you'll just be able to have is that how much increase are you seeing in that particular period now let me help you visualize that in case we try to build this in power bi how is let's say a sample calculation going to work out take a look we are again working with the three tables sales products and this time a calendar table which now also has the accumulator column that i showed it to you now, for instance, consider one row of the sales table, right? So I'm looking at this particular row where the product is H gel, which is right here. And the price of that particular product is $15. Now, if I have to calculate sales for that particular product, I will take the number of units to, I will multiply that with 15, which is nothing but a simple, straightforward VLOOKUP. I can connect with the product code right here and the product code right here, and I will get price into units. Once I get the price into units, note that the price is the base price and I also have to increase the price by certain factor. What is that factor? I will get that factor in the calendar table. So if you take a look at the current row right here, this date is the 19th of May. If I go take a look at what was the price increase on the 19th of May, I'm going to see that this is going to be 2%. So $15 multiplied by 2% increase is going to give me what increase do I have to apply on the total sales and that should actually carry out my calculation really well and here is our star schema so we have the products table the calendar table and the sales table and these are all connected through one to many relationship and here is a standard simple sales calculation so i'm saying that hey go in every single row of this particular table in every single row of this table i will write a vlookup to get the price and the price is going to be multiplied with the units and then another vlookup 
to get to the accumulator that means what has been the price increase and that's my simple standard sum x function now that is the proposed solution which does not break the star schema now the one question that i wouldn't want to go unanswered is that how do we damn get that accumulator column that i have been speaking about and that's the work that we have to do in power query to get that column and add it to our calendar table so that our model is beautiful all right people i'm in power query which is undoubtedly my favorite part of power bi and i'm working with a few tables right here so the sales table is something that you've already seen the products in the calendar table is also that you've seen but i would like to draw your attention towards the work that i have done in the accumulator table at the start of this table we just have the standard two columns which is the month and the price increase column and that's also what we saw it in the picture. Nothing that fancy here. It's just that it's showing you in the month of May, 2% price increase in the month of November, 5% price increase, so on and so forth. Now, in order for me to actually increase the price, what I would do is I would create an accumulated function, which is right here. Now, I would not go to the depth of explaining you the function, what, how the function has been written, what's the M code. You can take a look at that, but I'll give you a basic logic of how this function is working. So essentially what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to go ahead and take a look at the previous row is something that I'm trying to take a look at. So in the previous row, I say that, hey, if the value is equals to a null value, then why don't you write a zero? then I will say one plus zero percent and I take this calculation and I multiply that with one. So one multiply by one plus zero percent is obviously going to give me a one. Now, once I go to this particular value right here, I'm going to maybe say something like one multiply by one plus two percent right here. It's going to give me a 1.02 percent, like 1.02, which is nothing but the price increase. Now, once you have increased the price, the value keeps on getting filled with the price increase and the next price increase is calculated based on the previous increase. And that's nothing but the accumulated right here. You can see that for the first four months, it stays one, which is no increase. And then it stays 2 percent increase and then it kind of goes to 5 percent increase, so on and so forth. Now, the output of this step, which is accumulation, is nothing but a list. But I need this list to be joined along with the table. So I need the month column, I need the price increase column, and the accumulated increase that I'm trying to calculate. And here is where I'm creating a little table, which is nothing but the concatenation of the list along with this particular table. And now we have three columns. So we have the month column, the price increase column, and the accumulator right here. And then I do some change type here to kind of set the data types. And that is my table. Now mind it, this is not a calendar table. This is just a price increase accumulation table that I have built. Now this price increase, which is a 2% price increase, needs to go and connect with my calendar table. So let's just go take a look at the calendar table. If you take a look at my calendar table, at the step right here, which is up until the change type step, I have some standard columns, nothing that complicated. I'm sure you have drawn calendar tables in Power Query. That's not very complicated. So I have a date column, the index column, the month column, and the year column. In the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a merge. Apply a merge between the date column here and apply a merge between the date column of the accumulated query. Now, you're going to see that as soon as I apply a merge, I obviously get a table. I'm going to expand this particular table and get the accumulated column from that table. Now, you're going to see that in the accumulated table right here, we don't really have all the dates. We just have the start of the month. That means which month is set to show the price increase. So obviously you get the first price. If I just go right here, you get the first price as one and then you get all the bunch of nulls. And then whenever the price increases the next time, I think it's in the month of let's say May and you get let's say 2% price increase and all of them are nulls because other values are not there in the table. Hence, I have to use a simple you know, technique called fill down and it fills down all the values and I get to have the price increase whenever the price increases. Now that is the table which I'm going to load it into Power BI and not really load the accumulator table. Once the tables have been loaded, here is how my data model looks. So standard products table, calendar table with the accumulated column and my total sales. And now on this particular table, I can write in a ridiculously simple DAX, which is right here total sales, which is nothing but, hey, why don't you go inside every single row of the sales table, do a VLOOKUP to get your price, and then multiply that with the units, and then also add an accumulator, which is the price increase on top of that. Once you do this calculation and you drag that in the total sales, your total sales is going to show the increased price. If I, let's say, apply any filter to any particular product, I can see that the product was $13.5 as a base price. This is the price increase, and that is the new price of that product in that particular month. 
and the sales reflects that. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this one. Obviously, my objective in this video was not to show you the tricky power query calculation or the DAX or anything else. I wanted to give you a perspective of if you have a hard problem to solve, please do think about how can you creatively model that within the tables at the back so that your model becomes ridiculously easy to solve. Of course, let me know if you have any questions around this. I'll be glad to help. And in the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my power query training courses. These are the very kind of problems that I talk about in my courses, how to model, how to solve harder problems so that you become really confident in solving the problems of your own data. I suggest that you take a look at the courses. It's going to be super beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you like this one and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.